Fans of the Horus Heresy and Warhammer 40,000, thank you very much for joining me for part three of my guide to building a fell blade. And this episode is entitled Bend It Like Leaky Cheese. That's right, it's nothing to do with taking free kicks in football, but it's everything to do with straightening out and getting a good fit on the resin parts for this fell blade kit, in particular, interfacing them with the plastic hull components. So here we are back at the breakfast bar. I think the last time we were here is when I was working on the Legio Custodes Orion dropship. Nice to be back at this place associated with the art of resin whispering. There you go, that's a good title for me, the resin whisperer. Okay, let's begin by picking up with where we left off last time and a little bit of a PSA on the build and I forgot to mention this with a watch out on the instructions instructions from assembling the plastic hull components and this is very straightforwardly this so to start with it shows you the lower hull and the two sides and it says and I quote assemble plastic components as shown no 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 absolutely do not because if you stick this together like that you will find that this little here front plate will not fit. And I shall do a little demonstration of that. If you stick that together there, great, you can't put that in. So whatever you do, do not stick these pieces together to start with because you have to put that into the tongue and groove points first and there it goes yeah so if you were to follow that part of the instructions you, it would end in tears and you wouldn't even have really started yeah important note please do remember that let's start by going through what we've got so on the left here we've got a glass baking dish which i'm going to put some boiled water in and on this side i've got another pyrex baking dish this time it's got cold water in it and i'm going to use this one for heating parts up and this one for quenching them once I've finished manipulating them. What parts do we have? So we've got the turret, the upper hull, the two side track units, the two long sections of tracks. This is just to do a little bit of straightening on them, not really a significant part of this video. The accelerated cannon barrels and then the assembly for the front glasses plate. And these are all things where we want to think about manipulating them and getting a proper fit. So let me show you what we've got. Right, we'll start with this because this is probably the trickiest of the lot. This is an upper hull plate. Now, what I noticed is a couple of things with this. You can see that there's a gap on either side of a turret. So it doesn't sit quite flat on the hull plate. To start with, I thought, well, maybe the underside of this turret isn't even, but I've checked this to make sure it's square and it is actually square all the way around. So I think it's this that's slightly distorted. I've also noticed that when I put this onto the actual plastic, which we shall henceforth assemble. So those two go like that. And then this bit just drops on like so. When I put it on there, so I've got a good fit at the back on both sides. See that? However, I've then got a gap here at the front. So this needs bending out here. On this side, it seems to be all right. So I'm gonna heat this plate up, make it fit the turret, and also bend this little warp out as well. So that's the upper hull. The side track units, it's a couple of things. These are bent out at the sides. Not sure if you can quite see that. Yeah, so these aren't true. So they need bringing in a bit. And then down the length of the plate, these, this upper section here seems to be bowed out a little bit. And we've got the same thing on this one. So we've got a bowed out bit there. And that's a little bit bowed out as well. And the same thing here. What this is doing is this is getting in the way of a good fit at the moment. And if I just show you the push fit. Let 
we hold back on there. So that's not too bad, but at the moment it's kind of going like that. But I actually think it really, this part here against the plastic hull, it wants to sit more like that. So I think this needs bending in a bit. And if we look at the same fit on the other side, same sort of thing. Here we've got a gap here. Now, we'll see. That one as well a bit similar. So we want to bend those out a bit. The next thing is to look at the glasses plate because this is quite a tricky geometry, this one. And let me just demonstrate to you why. So actually we do need our front hull. As you can see, this is why it's essential not to stick anything together until you've done all this fitting work. Right, so that goes like that. We need to take that off again. I take the glasses plate and that slides in the front and you've got these two notches which guides that in. You've got a notch here or a lip that holds it in place on this side but you don't have it on that side which complicates the fitting somewhat. We then drop the hull on and get it all connected up. There we go. We then need the heavy bolter turret which is going to sit there like that and then the actual turret housing itself and it's quite a tricky fit this to get it all lined up and you can see that there's a gap on the left hand side of the camera shot on the, on the right where it doesn't quite link up if I put my finger underneath and push that piece up we do get good contact there so I'm going to slightly bend this plate as well to deal with that so there's quite a few things to do here now these are all the things that I think you want to look at these are all the things I think you want to look at with working with warps out on this model and what we're doing here will hopefully set us up for a much more straightforward track assembly than if we just built this as it is that's why we're bothering to do this and of course the final fit is going to look better particularly around the front as well for it these two we're just going to straighten out you don't have to but it will make it easier to fit it if you're not having to deal with a slight bit of bend and then finally, we've got the twin accelerator cannon, and he's just got a little bit of a warp in it. Not quite straight, so I'm going to take that out as well. It's pretty good. It's almost there. That's the plan in terms of what we're going to work on. I'm going to start with the upper hull plate, do that. Then I'm going to do the glasses plate. Then we'll move on to the track units and then do the peripheral parts last. So I'm now going to go boil the water, and then we'll do the manipulation. Right, so there we go. We've got lots of nice hot water so i'm going to put that piece of hull in there and we'll just wait a little bit for that to soften so while we're waiting for that to happen just to remind ourselves that when we're working with lots of freshly boiled hot water to be mindful of those people or creatures who might be in the environment with us if you've got kids or pets you know make sure you don't leave your hot water lying around once you've done with it don't leave it unattended getting a little bit of flex on that we'll put it back in for a bit longer all right let's give it a go now okay that's all right now, so I need to press the turret onto it. Press it onto the turret. Well, that's quite interesting that. The, the process of doing that, it's got a nice alignment there. I think the turret fits a bit better now. The uh, turret's not quite there yet. Just got to do a bit of manhandling until it fits right. Okay, that's all right. So I'm going to stick in the cold water to quench it. So let's try the fit onto the plastic hull. That's good. There you go. We've got a nice tight fit forward and back now. That's perfect. And now let's just drop that turret back on. See how that looks. Not bad. Perhaps a little bit picky here. There's a slight gap on this side and maybe a touch on that side. I think I'm going to go with that though because I've got a nice square fit on the actual body. Right, so that's the turret done with. Let's do the glasses plate next. So I'll pop that in hot water. The other important tool we have here is a wooden spoon for fishing parts out of the said hot water. Yeah, and I've always found that forge old resin is very good in that regard and is quite forgiving for heat manipulation never had a problem with never had any problems with it going through repeated heat warm-up cool down cycles 
Okay. Cool that off. I've just bent that around a bit. Right, so let's just test fit this again. I'm hoping that we've got the desired result now. Then I can explain what I've done in a bit more detail. So that was all a bit quick. So then take our heavy bolter, cowl. There we go, yeah. So now you can see on the left and the right hand side of a heavy bolter mounting, we've got contact with the base. And we've also got a good fit down at the front of the glasses plate. And it's neater on the top. So what that looks like in terms of the actual part is, I just put a bit of a bend in it here. So bent this front bit down a bit and put a slight bend in the middle as well. And it's quite funny, it's, although it's no longer quite true, once you mount it in amongst the rest of the parts, it then does look true. It's quite, um, it's a little bit of visual trickery, we could say. I'm happier with that one than my original glaive front. I've learnt from doing that first one. I'm happy with that, so I didn't really get that bit right on the first glaive. Okay, so now we're going to move on and do the side track units. So let's start with this one. I think we might need some more hot water. I've got some more hot water, so let's start by bending out the, the front and side of the skirts on these uh, side plates and and basically I mean this is just heat it up and for me I just do them by pretty much by sight I mean you, if you've got a flat surface you could make use of that but for me I just work the bend out That's a rear done. Now the front. That was easier. Now I'm going to heat this top bit up as well. Okay, so that's soft. Do it a little bit more. It's softening, it's not yet soft enough. It doesn't matter with everything being wet because it's all it can all be dried off later. Take a look at this. So 
I've bent that top ridge and if we look here we've got a nice fit all around this seam and you can see front on it looks good yeah I think we've got a nice true fit with the rest of it and the final test is just to drop these road wheels in and check the fit with those so that's the right set so it's that one and that one there that looks good to me they look at the same sort of height which is what you want cool so i'm going to go with that let's do the other side Pull that off. So I've done the front and rear of the armor skirt there. Got those fairly uh, satisfactory. Now I'm just going to heat this up and do the same thing with bending that into shape as the other side. Hopefully we've still got enough heat left in this batch of water. While on that, I'm going to put those two pieces of track in to warm up as well, which will just leave us with the accelerator cannon to deal with. It's nearly there. quite as neat at the rear there quickly quench that had to make a sudden quick lunge then because I think it was starting to move and I just had it in the right position You can see here this is slightly down this part of the upper hull so I need to bend this up a little bit to get that back in line so it's actually the other part we need to move back to working on now in the meantime it's like our tracks have straightened out so he's nice and bending out so I can just take those straight and dunk them Yep, they look nice and flat. Happy with that. Right, just need a bit more hot water to finish this off and then do the accelerator cannon. Right, okay, for this last bit, we're gonna switch over to this slightly old and gnarly plastic jug for our hot water. So if I steam the camera lens up, that would be hilarious. Nope, got away with it. Take the top hull. I need to heat this corner here. Oh, probably that side actually. Okay. Heat it a little bit more. Got a bit of giving it now. So bob that on there, get the side track unit, slap it on. Yeah, you see? Yeah, it's definitely down, isn't it? Right, I'm gonna have a 
go at bending that then. Sometimes you just got to be a bit, a little bit more physical with these. You have a bit of handling to get them to do what you want. And I hope what you're kind of getting a feel for is just the kind of reality of working the bends out on these kits. Not sure how well this will edit all together in the end, but we will see. Still not quite taken by that. What's going to need doing again? So got some more flexibility in it this time. Okay, so <laughs> you see the challenge here that you've got to get things hot and then get them reassembled quite rapidly. Okay. I think we're about there now. I'm gonna cool that off and see how it looks. Right, are we there now? I think we've gone a little bit too far the other way, okay. Doesn't want to play ball this one, it's quite tricky this. I mean I'm trying to get it flush with the other resin armour plate so it's a really, yeah, it's quite a precise fit. Well, no, it's not a precise fit, but it's a quite an exact fit that I'm looking for. Quite a, sp a very specific position I want this part to end up in. Let's have a look at the other side again. Yeah, other side, I'm dead pleased with that. This side, maybe it's there actually. Let's quench it off one more time. Put the accelerator cannons in to start heating up. See, so yeah, I'm really pleased with this side of the tank. I'm not so pleased with the other side at the moment. I think, I don't know. I think I need to heat the whole side up, lift it a bit. Yeah, right. Let's do the accelerator cannons first. We'll put that in and start heating it up. Right, so accelerator cannons. These got a twist on them going to the side, so we just need to, well, untwist them. Yeah, they look pretty straight and parallel now. We we'll just bob them into the mount. And they look they're good. They're fine that way. Happy with those. If 
only this top hull was that easy. This top hull is fighting hard. It doesn't want to go into the right shape. It's been naughty. Ironically, I'm not sure if I'm undoing a bit of the work I did before, but hey ho. Okay, so just move. It's teasing up just a bit. Okay, right, there we go. I'm happy with that now. Maybe just a little bit of sanding and other work at the end and careful positioning. Okay, give that a final quench off. Then I'm gonna finish up by just putting all the parts together to show you. So let's just tidy this up a bit. That was quite an epic bit of work that was. Now, don't be disheartened if you've watched me do this and think, oh my God, that looked terribly hard because I've actually made it much harder to do this by working around a camera tripod to actually video this. This wasn't very easy to work around. So it wouldn't actually be this hard to do if you're not filming it, you would find it easier. I've made it deliberately hard for myself by filming it. So yeah, don't get disheartened by that. It's not actually as hard to do when you're not trying to film it. So I'm just going to put all these parts together. And if this all looks right, this has kind of got the kit to the point whereby it's ready to assemble the hull and stick it together. It's quite satisfying when you get to this point because everything's kind of like at the point where it's like, yeah, we can build this now. It is going to fit and it's all going to look good in the end. Pop that on. That on. And then I'm just going to take those cannons out there because that's only push fit and just have a little check on the turret slight gap there but i'm happy with that i'm given i think getting the hull fitted correct was the main thing i can live with that little bit of a gap there around the turret we've got the upper hull fitting the plastic hull properly we've got a really good join on the side armor skirts where they meet the upper hull whoops i'm sliding around and then this assembly here the front hull has all gone together very nicely and we've got a good connection between the glasses plate and the front plate the one at 90 degrees with the towing lug and that was a bit of a wrestle but we got there just to reiterate if you do this yourself i'm sure you'll find it easier if you're not trying to film it do bear that in mind don't get put off in terms of how to just work out the warps and get a really good fit on all the different bits of your fell blade hull, straighten the guns out, which was dead easy, straighten those bits of track out. So this is now at the stage where it's ready to build, put it together, which is excellent. I feel that I'm gonna have a much easier time putting this together now than I did with my glaive because I've done all this straightening, I know everything fits, now it's just a question of gluing it, which we'll come to and talk around that. So I think that about wraps it up. I hope you found that a useful demonstration of getting a good fit on all the main hull components of the Forge Walled Fell Blade Tank. Please share your thoughts and observations in the comments section as always, I'll be interested to hear. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye. And welcome to the epilogue of this tale of resin manipulation. I haven't spent all that time doing that resin manipulation that we just watched. I then went away and done some more work with preparing the model and come across some additional work that required doing. And this centers on this part here, which is the left-hand side track unit. Let's begin with understanding what we have by looking at the right-hand side. We've got the right-hand side, and what we've got is we've got the track unit and then the plastic corresponding piece of the hull. And what this does is this connects in like so. Then you can see that the plastic pins go into this channel and then that all lines up like so. Note here how we've got a good close fit 
between this piece and the plastic hull. When I did the same piece of fitting with the other side, so the left hand piece, what we got was, well it looked a bit like that. Yeah, so now I've put this right. And this bit here wasn't properly contacting with this and there was a gap. And it reminded me of a problem that I had when I was doing the glaive and I had exactly the same issue. And with that, I didn't kind of really resolve it properly and it ended up with the tracks being a little bit off at the front. But I looked again at this piece and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out where the geometry was wrong. And eventually I spotted it and it's quite difficult to spot. And what it is, there was a slight upward bend in the front half of this. And you could tell this by placing the part flat on a board like so, and there was a gap here at the front. Now, I've since heated this up and bent that down, so it's now flat, as you can see. We've got a nice clean contact there now. And if we put the hole together, like so, See that on this side, nice good contact between the track unit and the hull. And on this side, not quite as clean a contact, but nearly there. So a little bit of a gap which I need to still work out. We've got a good alignment with these plastic guides. That's almost like the last little bit of this puzzle, I suppose. Just bending this into shape a bit. And I may yet just have another go and bend this a bit more, but it's quite tricky. I might have got it to about the optimum place now. I might have another go, but obviously trying to bend this bit in a bit is difficult without affecting the geometry of it up here. This is exactly the same issue I had with the glaive tank I made a number of years ago. So I suspect it's a common feature to this part. I don't know if it's the original that's got a slight twist on it or something to do with the way the mold's been made, but to have it come up twice like that tells me it's not just chance, it's actually a feature of the kit. So definitely one to watch out for and be aware of that. So that is the end of the epilogue. Don't forget to come back for the next episode.